Are you healthy, fit and strong and do you love it? Are you healthy, fit and strong and do you love it? And do you want to inspire other people to be healthy, fit and strong? Now what do you do if the people in your life, the people that you care about, your family, your friends, your partner, aren't as passionate about being healthy, fit and strong as you are? Uh, is it frust frustrating you? Does it make you angry? Uh, does it annoy you that you know what it's like to be healthy, fit and strong, but people don't seem to follow what you tell them to do? And there lies perhaps the challenge. How do we feel when, when we are told what to do? When somebody preaches at us, when somebody tells us what's the right or wrong thing to do, uh, as children, if somebody says, don't do that, usually we want to go and do it more. So if you say to somebody, don't eat that, or you should do this, is it possible that they get their back up, that they get angry, that they want to justify what they're doing at the moment is the right thing to do? So there's a couple of questions to ask. Number one, as I always ask, are you living the example? Are you as healthy, fit and strong as you could possibly be? Would people look into your life and say, I want her energy, I want his stamina, I want his ability to think clearly, I want his physical or her physical condition, look at them, they're just amazing. And not just for the short term. There's a lot of people that go on a diet or they start an exercise program and they stick to it for a short period of time and they might even get results. But the person that gets healthy, fit and strong, or is healthy, fit and strong and always has been, and stays that way long term for the rest of their life, could that be the example that people could look at our life and say, wow, if they can do it, I can do it. Then if we tell people what to do versus get them to make up their own mind, make their own decisions. So I could say to somebody, don't eat that, it's bad for you versus do you love eating that? Why do you eat that? Is it an important part of your life? And if somebody really loves a certain food or a certain way of eating or an exercise plan, whether or not you think it works, if you tell them it won't work or it's bad for them or they shouldn't do it, is it possible that they will just justify what they're already doing? So if you ask the right questions, and that's always my, everybody's different. Everybody's got different foods that they like and they don't like, different exercises that they like and they don't like. One of the great questions I always ask is, what, what exercise do you love the most? Versus, which one do you hate the least? Because a lot of people just don't exercise. And in fact, it's been suggested by the top statistical experts in the world that nine out of 10 people will never have an exercise program they can stick to for the rest of their life. Nine out of 10. So most people either don't exercise at all or what they're doing will never work. So whatever we've been doing up until now obviously hasn't worked if we want to inspire people to be healthy, fit and strong. So rather than tell people what to do, how about live the example, be the example so that people can see that it's possible. Then get them to make up their own mind. So if somebody says to me, Rowie, what is it that you eat or how do you exercise? I go, it doesn't matter what I eat or how I exercise. What do you want to eat? What do you love? What don't you like? Why do you eat the way you do at the moment? Where do you like to eat? When do you like to eat? How you feel if you have to change what you're going to eat? How you feel if you don't? If you were your own high performance eating coach, and it goes the same for exercise. If you were your own higher performance exercise coach, what advice would you give yourself? Not what, what advice should I give you? And I've been a personal exercise coach all of my life. But I would never be so disrespectful or so irresponsible to tell somebody how to eat or how to exercise. Because first of all, people are very smart and they can figure it out for themselves. But the most important thing is, isn't it possible that if I ask the right questions, that people will then come up with their own ideas, which are they more likely to stick to something that they've told themselves to do versus somebody else telling them what to do? Now, a lot of people will say, oh, but Rowie, just tell me what to eat and tell me what to exercise or do exactly, exactly what you tell me to do. And that may even work in the short term, but what if I'm not there? What if the personal coach is not there? What if the dietitian's not there? What if the naturopath's not there? If you're relying on somebody else to tell you what to eat and how to exercise, is it possible that if they're not there, there'll be an excuse not to do it? Uh, and that's happened to me so many times in my career where I've really thought that people have got the idea on how to eat and exercise, and then I move away or I'm not there anymore, and then they just listen to another expert. But wouldn't it be nice if the people in our life become their own expert? If you were your own high performance eating and exercise coach, 
what advice would you give yourself on how to eat and how to exercise to get the best results for you for the rest of your life? What are you prepared to change? What are you not prepared to change? What do you love to eat? And why would we tell people not to have the things that they love? And why would we give them food to eat that they don't want to eat? Why would we give them exercise that they don't want to do? Is it possible that people are very smart and can figure it out for themselves? And wouldn't it be responsible to give them that opportunity rather than tell them what to do? So if we ask the right questions, which for me is simply, what do you want? What's important to you? What is your goal? Why is that important to you? Where do you want that to happen? When do you want it to happen? How will you feel if it does? How will you feel if it doesn't? Because they're very emotional questions. Because we, we make changes based on emotion. We either make uh, change for the pleasure of achieving or the pain of not achieving, not getting what we need, things being horrible for the rest of our lives. So those two questions are really important. How will you feel if you do? How will you feel if you don't? Are you on track or off track? Because that's a, just a respectful question, but it also tells you the headspace of the person. Are they serious about making a change? And then if you were your own high performance eating and exercise coach, what advice would you give yourself? And then the beautiful question, and I think again, very respectful, what do you want me to do? Is there anything that I can help you with versus here's what you should do? And I've been involved with too many relationships, whether it's parents and children, uh, husbands and wives, partners, where oh, you have to eat a different way or stop doing that or you shouldn't exercise that way. And, they, and people wonder why it becomes an argument. If you really care about the people in your life and you really want them to be healthy and to be fit and to be strong, I'm going to ask those three questions again. Are you living the example long term without roller coasting, without changes? So are you the person that's always healthy, always energetic, always fit, always strong, and you always love what you do? You're never whinging and moaning, complaining about your eating plan or your exercise plan, because obviously that's not very motivating for anybody. Then rather than tell people what to do, could it be a good idea to ask them questions? What do you want and why do you want it and how will you feel if you get it? If you were your own high performance eating and exercise coach, what would you do? And then rather than uh, forcing our opinion onto people, could it be a really good idea for them to come up with the way they think they should eat and the way they think they should exercise? So I'm a very old lady now and I'm happy to share that passionately because I'm healthy, fit and strong and I'm a young old lady. But I have tried yelling, screaming, teaching, preaching, telling, and I learned the hard way that that doesn't work. If you really want people to make long-term changes, I have to live the example, I have to ask the right questions, and then people have to come up with their own advice rather than me giving them advice. Because if I want somebody to stick to something for the rest of their life, is it more likely that they will believe themselves, they will trust their own opinion, versus and they might trust my opinion, but again, what if I'm not there, and what if another expert comes along? And I always ask, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a joke in my life where I say, well, it doesn't matter what I say, if somebody comes along that's got more ripped abdominals or tighter butt cheeks or they've got more experience or they've got more educational degrees, people often change experts. But it's not the expert that's got the best advice for you personally. What do you think you should do to be healthy, fit and strong for the rest of your life? And could it be a really good idea to hold yourself accountable to that so that you can live the example for the people in your life and then maybe they will make changes too? So rather than getting frustrated or angry that the people in your life might not want to eat the same way that you do or exercise the same way that you do, or they've come up with these, and there's lots of crazy diets and exercise plans and pills, powders and potions that people start. But if you ask the right questions, is it possible that they can figure it out for themselves? And of course, last but not least, if you learn your anatomy and physiology, is it possible that you won't get led down any garden path and you won't get bamboozled by any BS about how to eat and how to exercise because you know how to do it. So could that be a great question to ask the people in your life? How about we study, work out, find out how the human body works so that we know whether or not this eating or exercise plan will actually work for you? Is that how the brain works? Is that how the heart and lungs work? Is that how the immune system works? Is that how the digestive system works? Is that how the skeletal and muscular system work? And if the answer is no, then we know that that thing's not going to work for you. So could we work together as a team rather than preaching, teaching and telling so that the people in our lives can be healthy, fit and strong and thoroughly live their lives and live their life to the max. Super duper do, how are you living your life to the max? Woohoo!